I think we are live. Hello. Hello. Happy Wellness Wednesday. Yeah. I am here with Dan Gorley. Welcome, Dan Gorley. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Welcome. <laughs> it's an absolute pleasure. So um, I have to give everybody our background because I have to really concentrate to call you Dan because um, we knew each other when we were teenagers and I was Laurie and you were Danny. So I'm going to co concentrate very hard. You are now? No? Now, yeah, now officially. You're, you're no longer Danny. You are Dan. So yes. Whatever you want to call me, I will answer to Laurie or Laurel. Okay, let's say, let's Laurel. How about that? Okay, our yeah. grown-up names now. We're all grown up. <laughs> <laughs> sort of. Come as you are. Call me whatever you want. Yeah. So happy Wellness Wednesday. This is, um, we are wrapping up Mindset Month. And um, Danny, oh, I did it. Dan is um, an, an expert in my mind on mindset and was instrumental in my life, actually. So I'm going to start with gratitude. Okay. So you're going to have to hear this, open your heart and listen wow. from a place of gratitude. Um, the interview that I did with Ori, who was my Taekwondo coach in Paris. He's now the coach for the Paralympics and for Taekwondo in France. We were talking about resilience and <clears throat> I haven't studied resilience from a science perspective, but something that he said about resilience that I had never heard before is he said to, to promote resilience, you really have to be in a space of love and care and trust. And that's what you were for me, like the first person outside of my family to share love and care and trust. So. I moved into a resilient person, partly due to your influence, so. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, gosh, um, yeah. I'm honored. I'm so honored. Um, is it okay if I start with your bio? Sure. Okay. So Dan Gorley's professional journey started in sport, all sport, football, lacrosse, ice hockey, golf, um, mountain biking, rollerblading, marathoning, brought joy on a personal level as an athlete and was a comfortable place to begin a career. Is that, is that accurate? I think so. He taught London, he taught lacrosse in London at Sam Houston University and for youth in rec and middle and high schools. He was an official for the sport for a decade. He was a golf caddy for the US Senior Open and on the PGA Tour and an administrator for Hockey North America. His desire and passion for sport crossed over after receiving a master's degree in counseling. Mm -hmm. Then he worked in sports psychology as a sports enhancement uh, mental game consultant and faculty at McDaniel College creating and delivering curriculum on optimal performance and philosophies of sport for master's students. Dan was a guidance counselor in the public schools for over a decade and now is a guidance counselor and coach in private school when he's just coached a game just and there was a good result. There was. And he's back in his office. And here we are. Gosh, you did your homework on that bio. Wow. Was it was it right? Did I make any mistakes? Yeah. No, my gosh. I'm not sure where you got some of that information from. But um, yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited. Uh, you know, part of your past guests, um, they focus a lot on uh, the idea of mindset. I think it's a great topic that you bring up. And it seems like all of your guests have a particular um, thing that works, like a philosophy that works within themselves and, and not only how they share that in service to others. So I think mindset is um, a, a truly, a, you know, we look through things with a different lens. You know, um, if you really like math, let's say if you're a math teacher or if you have, you're an economist, maybe you love math and that's your jam. You see everything in numbers or, or angles or, and it all makes sense to a person that loves math and that's their philosophy. And then, you know, people that really like uh, literature, um, you know, they like to see the stories and how they interpret their world and, and others around them as well through, through things like that. And, you know, um, my, my son is, uh, he likes engineering. Sometimes engineers can be, you know, 
Um, there are some abstract thinkers out there as well, just uh, opposite of that concrete thinker. So um, there's a lot of different mindsets out there. And, I, and, and I, feel like, I feel like my jam, and I've always been my jam, is I really love uh, uh, sports behavior competition. It doesn't matter what sport. I, it's hard for me to have any allegiance to like one particular team. I think because of when I was younger, <laughs> you would know what, who your team are, you know what the lineup is, right? But then that changed with a lot of different things. And now, you know, it's difficult to follow the person that you once cheered for is now playing for the other team. And, you know, you know you're like, ah. Oh. So, you know, I, I enjoy refereeing and there's a, a fine line of, uh, uh, as a ref to call that balance. And I really liked where that balance is of the elite mindset in sports. You know, you talk about Michael Jordan, you think about these elite mindset athletes, uh, Tom Brady certainly is, is up there. And then, you know, you have your elite athletes that have this, uh, this it factor to them. And there's others that are just kind of mull along a little bit. Um, but is there that mindset? Is it, is, a, is it a different mindset? Is it the same mindset? Are there pieces of a lot of different things that we try to put into our lives? Um, and again, like, as a school counselor, you see um, a lot of different um, mindsets that come in your door and leave your door too. You know, it's really, it's, it's a lot of self-awareness. So I, I, that's what I really, really enjoy is just uh, the passion for the game, these fourth quarter moments of, uh, of will. It's like a battle of wills. And to me, that I can't see like rooting for this team against this team. Although I do have there some favorites, but for the most part, I mean, look at that Bills game from this weekend and Kansas City. That was just a great effort by both teams. Great effort. You know, and I, I, my heart went out to each of those fans of each because it was being, heart was ripped out. Pull it back in, it ripped out. So if you're not familiar with it, they scored 25, total of 25 points in two minutes or something like that. But it was a great effort on both both teams and, and um I always say, is there something to that? Is there something to that quality? Um, I don't know. What do you think? What do I think? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm just listening to you. I'm going to throw it back to you as, as the expert in sports psychology and mindset in general. But I, I see that you're... Use the term loosely expert. <laughs> okay. I feel, like, I feel like it's more like uh, a, um, an affliction to an avocation. That's what I, that's what I consider. It's, it's something that uh, is my hobby and it's some things that I like to certainly pass on to um, the people, my, the group that's around me, whether it's at school here at Gerstel or my family or friends. And, and um, so um, again, it's an affliction. It's thing I can't help it, um, but it's more like an avocation. It's more like a hobby. So I really truly enjoy um, just looking uh, at life through that lens as anyone else has their own philosophy. And, and that's what I see. I know, I know it might sound odd, but I'm okay. So looking at life through the lens of sport is what you're saying? Yeah, sports and then counseling. Um, you know, there's some other things that kind of make up who we are along the way. Coaching is a part of that. Um, it's, it's, it, that's, this is, is uh, a view. So I thought what we would maybe talk about, you know, these different mindsets. Um, like I say, your past hosts have, have some have some really good. Um, it's almost like a, a a trail, a map that leads us to this idea of moving movement or improvement, going from going from point A to point B. Um, but um, I thought what we would do. Let me just throw a little um, PowerPoint up here. Let me share some screen. Okay. Um, I, I really, as far as uh, counseling goes, um, I really think that there's a lot of stigmas that are out there, you know, these stigmas of mental health. And, um, you know, a lot of times, whether it's um, kids that come in my office or clients that I have outside the office, there are certain stigmas that we have to come to terms to when it comes to counseling. And so, um, if you remember, got a picture here of Simone Biles. Remember over the Olympics, over the summertime, when um, she had uh, 
the what was it the the yips yeah. and you know is that a physical or is that an emotional is that a you know um psychological issue i'm sure it's a combination of a lot of different things um, she had the right to bow out that she wanted to you know this isn't about was it the right thing to do did she take somebody who could have been in her place that's not the discussion that we're having here but the discussion is this idea of mental health and and there's a quote here that michael phelps and michael phelps if you think about mindsets um definitely has some uh i mean he's the most decorated um swimmer out there um some transgressions I, I think we all have some transgressions and and how you work into that mindset and, and this was his idea i figure that he was the expert in this idea of um uh mental health and having this conversation where we get rid of those stigmas so he says we carry a lot of weight on our shoulders and it's challenging especially when we have the lights on us and all of these expectations being thrown on top of us so that was after simone biles withdrew from the uh, women's gymnastic team final in the olympics so now the word expectations whenever i see that word expectations i, I immediately think stress <laughs> expectations because sometimes they're too lofty sometimes they might be too low maybe somebody else puts those expectations on you maybe it's a a, a parent a friend a spouse or somebody outside social media expectations and we see that a lot more so now than than any other time so you know, I think it's it's uh, it's it's a time to have that that conversation. Rory McElroy here. He talks about uh, I'm glad that at least the conversation, this conversation about mental health, is being had right now. So let's let's get rid of some of those stigmas. You know, let's get rid of that stigma. And um, he said the conversation it's not taboo anymore. More people can talk about it. Just as someone has a knee injury or an elbow injury. If you don't feel right 100% mentally, that's an injury too. So I think that we have a little more, um, you know, society has changed. And this is a part of that as well. So, you know, but again, I feel like, uh, look at Naomi Osaka, you know, she's had some mental health issues. She's a, a tennis star. She's withdrew some events. Uh, think about Antonio Brown, you know, that's another one. He's definitely had an interesting um, journey along the way. It definitely has his own mindset. You know, does it work? Does it not? You know, I think the proof is in, in our experiences, really. My, my favorite show, maybe ever, and he sounds like Jamie Tart. Jamie Tart. Do, 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 do. Have you seen this? You have to see Ted Lasso. Oh um, yeah, I'm kind of like, I don't know Ted Lasso, like so you know, Antonio Brown. <laughs> <laughs> that I'm like, oh, that would be pretty cool if I had time to binge a show or anything like that. So, yeah. well, but I will, I'll get there. Get there. <clears throat> so anyway, I'll probably bring Ted Lasso up again later because he has something else for mindset stuff. Oh, but, um, he does. Oh, good. That's nice. Well, that's yeah. good. Like, and I just like the idea of mindsets. I think we all have, uh, your guests had all their, their different mindset and, and how we approach things too. I think uh, that's... that. It continues to grow. So um, we take bits and pieces from things that work and we come up with our own, our own mindset uh, in, in a sense. So um, one thing that we're working on right now is this thing called uh, growth versus fixed mindset. Um, I work with a, a really good bunch of people here at Gerstel and um, our uh, middle school principal. Right now, we're doing some professional development on this idea of growth mindset. And I thought, well, gosh, maybe we could we could tie that into um, you know our Wellness Wednesday. Um, it's another uh, type of mindset, really, and how we can kind of view um, not only within ourselves, but also if we're we're giving feedback to others or that synchronicity uh, back and forth. That um, it's an interesting uh, concept. Um, you know, when you think about this idea of fixed mindset, it seems so final, doesn't it? Like, it seems so like it's done with and we're good and pop up. It, it, it doesn't allow us to kind of step out of the box sometimes. But I feel like in that box, that's where that comfort is. And so sometimes it's difficult to step out of the box for, um, you know, people that might be uh, going through some counseling or, or uh, maybe some, some mental health services.
you know, there's that, that peacefulness inside the box. And I think sometimes we gotta, we gotta step outside the box a little bit, you know, but this idea of a fixed uh, mindset, you know, um, I, I have an example here, gosh, um, something with like a fixed mindset. You hear this a lot of times in the educational, oh my gosh, uh, you know, we'll say, uh, Bobby, that was a great job on the test. You know, you're so smart. That was a great job on the test. You're so smart, you know? And so like, that was kind of like fixed. That's like in a box a little bit. And so, you know, Bobby feels good, but I wonder like, we talk about a like growth mindset. Um, I feel like there's a lot more open-ended questions that you pose for the person that you're providing feedback to. So it's not so final, it's not so boxed in. And it, uh, you hear this too, you say the same thing, but differently, you know, great job. The study plan you made helped a lot. You should make another for the next test. So a lot of things we're, we're focusing on things like um, progress and strategy. You know, those are some things that are, that are really important to try to analyze a little bit. Because really, I'm, gosh, when we're having a, a bad day, I think that we analyze like ourselves a little bit, you know, and sometimes we have certain feelings and sometimes somebody tells us that, you know, they're to help us out or even maybe put us in our place sometimes too. When sometimes you think, yeah, I guess I maybe sometimes I was a, you know, handle that differently, you know. So I think that we always, we always juggle things like that within um, our day. You know, we talked about some takeaways. Um, I think it's important in, in, in a healthy mindset to um, have some, uh, have some things that you, you go to. What are your go-tos? You know, a lot of times I ask, to, ask students, like, what are your go-tos? And I'm not sure what, what, like, like when you're in doubt, when you're in despair, when you're in uh, this depression, deep depression, sadness, there's a point where we, we can continue to um, maybe be in a desperate situation of panic or fear, which only feeds more fear, or we can have this transitional thought that, um, and, and that's what's, I think, fascinating about mindset because you can have a mindset for a while. I mean, the, a mindset is almost like it's a habit. Um, do you know anybody that gets up every morning and runs regardless of the weather, regardless of the uh, rain, the snow, <laughs> 30 below, 100 degrees out? That's their routine. That's their fixed routine. You know, they, and, and, and that provides a lot of comfort and it's a, a regimen that, you know, if all else fails, at least I have this time for myself. That's my go-to. So exercise is a go-to for, for um, a lot of people, a lot of kids. Um, it's difficult, though, with, with motivation. But if you're not into that particular kind of habit, um, there are some other things. There's a um, rem reminds me of uh, a boy um, years ago that was suffering with suicide ideation. And... He, um, very difficult uh, to talk about, you know, those feelings associated. A lot of times he came uh, nonverbal, which was really difficult because um, it's really tough because we're not really sure we're, we're counseling a lot on um, logic with someone, but it, there's this trust building too with that. And uh, over time, um, he described, um, there was a time when he was getting ready to prepare to commit suicide and um, this, 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 this finality. And um, he went into detail, which is really, this is how he's expressing himself. And I think expression is always good in counseling, uh, especially, especially feelings, you know, when you, when you're stuck with uh, a particular um, client or student, or if we, even within yourself, and you're not sure what it is that you're feeling, I think it's always good to answer that first question is, is if I'm panicked, and I'm thinking my irrational thoughts, or maybe my mind's racing, or lack of focus, or, you know, low motivation, a lot of these things, like, I find like if I'm lost, or with uh, uh, kids that are lost, let's focus on one word, one word, being what is it you're feeling. And I think a lot of times that, 
Well, I've never been asked that before, I guess. Maybe I've never thought about that. So um, that's always a good starting point, um, kind of see where, uh, wh where they are. Or even, again, if we do our own self-diagnosis as well. We talked earlier about um, when you're on an airplane, right? And you have a, a child next to you and the oxygen mask comes down. You don't put the oxygen mask, you do you first. First, you have got to take that self inventory first before we can kind of provide the, the proper feedback. Uh, so I think a lot of it is, is, is like that too. So, um, you know, there's this idea, this, this uh, uh, mindset, uh, it was a really good definition. This was uh, years ago uh, when I taught, we would just talk about this idea of mindset. And this is from the American Heritage Dictionary. It says, uh, it's a fixed mental attitude or disposition maybe how you carry yourself, that predetermines, it determines before, predetermines a person's responses to and interpretations of situations. So we all interpret situations a whole lot different. I mean, think about uh, the past two years, how uh, different perceptions are made and what's important to you, what's important to that person and everyone else. And, you know, it's, it's, the this idea that uh, e e interpretations it's different because we all come from different backgrounds. I mean, think about how much more diverse we are. I think over the past three years, we've focused more on diversity than ever before, and it continues to push the envelope of diversity. Um, so again, we come from different backgrounds, different perceptions, uh, experiences too. Think about those experiences. So a lot of these things. Um, that helps determine um, your mindset. When we think about if there's something that's, that's bothering us, and a lot of times um, we take the initiative, if there's something uh, in this, this idea of, of counseling, um, we wanna take action for that. So we really promote um, taking action uh, with a different kind of a self-awareness. It adds uh, a lot more critical thinking skills. With these options, we can do, gosh, there's so many things that, uh, let's say we have, uh, I had a, a student earlier come in and um, there was a, a boy who had another uh, suicide ideation and she knew it and, and she didn't know how to handle that. It was all through text messaging. She wasn't sure how to process that information. So a lot of times, like there's so many options of what she could do and how she could process this, this pretty heavy information. So we go through a lot of different options. With these options, we have one of two ways that we, that we kind of adhere to um, a positive or a negative response to any situation that we have. Let's think about that basketball game today. I don't know. Um, uh, there's three minutes left in the game. The ball's out of bounds underneath our hoop and we call a play. It's a planned play. All right, so if everybody's working together, that's a pretty positive result. We might get two points or we might get an open shot, you know, which is, was fine. The, the play, you know, how we evaluate that, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of process versus outcome. Like, I don't care if you get two points. I care more about the process. Like if, if this inbounds play, when we have five people that are in sync together, we have a pretty good shot of setting ourselves up for success based on the process. That process is what's your individual job? What's your role? And timing is big too, because you know, it, it is this uh, movement of, of parts. Uh, and it's uh, the sum, again, is a positive process. If we can, you know, tonight, uh, part of the after game speech was, um, I really felt like um, the kids did really well, but we missed a lot of opportunities. You know, these are opportunities that we need to take advantage of in order for us to work to reach our full potential. We have to finish some of these opportunities that are either layups or rebounds or putbacks or easy boxing out, things like that. So let's focus more on the process. So, and that's what, what, what I really try to do too um, with our kids too, is let's, let's focus on the process, not the outcome. Because a lot of time the outcome you know, kids and, and clients are very um, panicked, you know, they're, they're locked up in fear. Their decision-making is really difficult uh, because 
you know, that maybe they focus a little too much on, on that negative. Um, you know, and, and maybe that's, maybe that's a habit. Again, a mindset is a part of a habit. You think about, you know, if there's uh, anything, uh, any situation when we're driving, I mean, my gosh, when we're driving, we have a lot of things too. If you have kids in the back or, you know, you have the, the, the light up front, you have some cars coming from the side and this side over there, you have our rear view mirrors. We have so much information that we're processing. And a lot of these things, um, there are questions that, I mean, we're just, we're just spitting out answers as we're going. And some of these, some of these things, like let's say a student that uh, is experiencing depression, you know, sometimes when they focus on the negative, there's a question and the first inclination is to focus on the negative. Okay, well, if it's that, like that, then this might happen. Another question, well, what if this happens? And then if that happens, and they're thinking the worst, if that happens, then what happens after that? And there's another question, oh my gosh. So you can see, you know, this downward spiral. And really we're, we're, we're getting to a point where uh, at the very end is despair. You know, it's this uncontrollable feeling of despair. And, you know, I, I referred to this, uh, this boy earlier. And what was interesting was that during these times uh, where we would, he would have the suicide ideation, he would get panicked in fear because he felt as if he was not in control. That's a pretty scary place to be sometimes, you know? So, um, you know, kind of how do we, how do we uh, bolster that? You know, um, a lot of the things that we do in the guidance office, there has to be an eclectic view, uh, an eclectic way in which you deal with student, uh, students and clients. You know, there's different theorists out there. You, you probably heard of Sigmund Freud, the father of psychoanalysis. I'm sure you have. And uh, there's, there's, there's uh, you know, other, other ones like Carl Jung or Viktor Frankl or Albert Ellis. And these are, these are people that have this view of what human behavior is. And I feel like that's just kind of grown. It's gotten a lot more diverse with, with that view, you know, Eric Erickson and things like that. But you know, I think once we get to a point where there's despair, like it's, it's a pretty tough uh, way to get out, you know, think about, um, look at um, addiction. I think that gets to a point where it, it can be completely out of control. You know, uh, in graduate school, we would have to go to some AA meetings just to observe, sit and observe. And interesting how people of all walks of life have lost the same kinds of things, jobs, relationships, self-esteem, things like that. And that, that can be a pretty tough place to, to kind of kind of pick yourself up. It can be difficult. Anyway, and that's the thing, like when we think about what is depression, you know, is that just like a downward spiral? I have this, the momentum of these compounding negatives that we all kind of just Sometimes we just get focused on these uh, one negative, which leads to another. And next thing you know, the outcome, you're panicked and you're locked up in fear. And you ever uh, have someone that has like a lot of red flags and you know, my goodness, this is going on and that's going on. And they tried to, and it's all just like, um, you know, a lot of red flags going off. So there's a pattern uh, of things that, that we kind of look for too. And that pattern, you know, that, uh, that downward spiral, there's, that's a clear sign of depression. So um, you know, and again, what do we do to uh, certainly from a, from a school standpoint, we always refer out to the professionals, you know, a psychologist or a psychiatrist. And that's really important to make sure that there's these indirect and these direct services that, that we provide. I, I wonder like what's between a, a negative thought and let's say we try to bring in a positive thought. There's, there's this, uh, transitional thought there's a transitional thought process of going from negative to positive or you know sometimes when it's like sometimes we're on a roller coaster we have some really really good days and sometimes when we go down it's bumpy and it's it's uh you know we feel a lot of uh negative emotions but there comes a point where this transitional um thought process uh, it has to change from one to the next so um i think that's where like a lot of that the uh, the growth mindset comes in and this idea of um, positivity. I know that a lot of times you think about self-help, a lot of it's positivity, isn't it? You hear a lot of hope out there. They, they all include these themes, these ideas of 
something positive to get you out of where you are, you know. Counseling sometimes, and you think about uh, from a, a feedback counselor standpoint, I think the main approach that we use is this idea of empowerment. We, we, you know, we, we want you to be strong and overcome this. You know, that's pretty much where, where we kind of do that. But also sometimes that's like a, 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 a square hole trying to fit around peg in a square hole. Sometimes when we say we're stronger than, and that's why I like um, athletics and the sports behavior, because I think that that's where that comes into play, this idea of uh, empowerment with your skills, with one another, to overcome somebody who's your nemesis, trying to do the exact same thing to you. And I love that whole juxtaposition with that. But uh, just that, that, that quick I, um, ideas of transitional thought. There's, there's all kinds of ideas. Let, let, let's read this, this growth mindset. Let me give you like kind of a, like an example. Am I talking too much? No, I'm, it, it's all good. I, I'm trying to store away my questions for when, when you close your mouth, I'll, I'll come back to it. Okay. It's all good. Keep going. All right. It's hard to see you falling asleep with these glasses on. So I'm falling asleep. <laughs> okay. Rocco is falling asleep back here, but I'm, I'm wide awake. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, again, this idea of the growth mindset, let's put a big positive with inside growth mindset. So uh, let's say someone, um, you have someone, let's say yourself, you say to yourself, this is just too difficult. I, I can't do it. It's just, just too hard. It's this fixed idea that I tried, I gave it my best shot and I'm, I'm done. And on the other side with the growth mindset, let's, it, it might be time to try some strategies that we learned, some strategies that we learned. Maybe I can give you a quick view of my, my, my board here. Um, there's a lot of times, uh, there's a student here that we're working on. It says small steps of improvement of hopefulness. The student mm -hmm. really wanted to work on um, improving uh, these moments when they're down, recognizing the fact that if they're in this negative state, they got to take action and, and they have to do something with that, that feeling, that emotion. So we came up with these small steps of improvement. Um, you know, a lot of times they wanted to go from A to Z in a matter of like this. And they see a lot of negative consequences from Z because, you know, it's all of these. Let's start with A first. Okay, let's try to identify A. Identifying A really, in this case, Let's try to be positive. That's the first thing. And how do we do that though? If we talk about different strategies, what's an area that you think you can improve on? Well, after some thought, they might say grades, I guess. Well, okay, well maybe grades actually, it, it allows you to focus over here on one thing and you're not focusing on maybe the negative. So that's a nice step from A to B, isn't it? That's one step. So if we focus our, intention or attention on maybe our homework, which is some things that we need to do, which can be difficult. If I'm gonna to commit to that, think about that, I'm not thinking about the negative sides. So it, and, and, and in this case, it's a particular mindset for them. Really, it's a particular mindset for them of where they need to consciously move from where they are and where they wanna be ultimately. So, but again, there's a, a lot of this idea of the uh, eclectic approach. That's really um, where we are because of diversity. You think about um, um, people that we deal with of all walks of life, it's diverse. And your view of things, many times it's not the same view that someone else has. So we have to be open to a lot of these different ways to, um, to, to provide feedback with, with a growth mindset. So it's just really interesting. Like it's, it's more like an open-ended. Here's, here's some other ones. Like you hear kids, like I made another mistake. Kids don't like to fail. We don't like to fail. It, it shows a vulnerability, right? And especially with kids don't like to fail. They don't understand that through failing, you build resiliency. And what did Dr. Jack Vaith say? The more resilient you are, the more positive you are, um, the more you help out around, the more you serve. So that is bringing us from this negative, and we're bringing it back up to this positive mindset. So 
hopefulness is a huge part uh, of this transitional thought that goes from one to the next. So here's one, like uh, I made another mistake. And what's your feedback or what's your internal um, feedback to yourself? Uh, okay, it's just another chance to learn. It's just another chance to learn, okay? Even though I failed, it's just another chance to learn. So that opens it up a little more, you know, and, and it provides uh, room to make mistakes, you know, allow yourself to make, make mistakes. Because, uh, you know, I think we're pretty hard on ourselves at the end of the day. Don't you think? Yeah, I just learned a quote last night by Nelson Mandela. Do you know this one? I, ne I never lose. I either win or I learn. And that learning process, isn't it interesting? Uh, you know, who you were, is it who you are now? And, and, and I feel like that there's this, um, you know, we're, we're on this, this path. I really like this uh, idea. You talk about uh, just another mindset. Well, I think what we're, we're talking a little bit about, I, I did some addition. I did a math problem. I'm not a math problem, but I kind of put it in here with some words. So I really like this idea of hope. Uh, this idea of hope, this transitional thought of going from one mindset of despair or sadness. There's this idea going to hope. And I really like the idea of this inspiration to aspire. You know, um, we can really beat ourselves up, but when we start on this roller coaster to move back up, you know, we have these positive thoughts of, you know, I, kind of like, what am I, what am I, what's my purpose? Like, what's my meaning? So you got to have a little bit of that hope in there to begin with. And I like this idea of the growth mindset. You know, we're always um, evaluating. We're always um, progressing. We are always persistent and, and we're always evaluating our progress too um, and the strategy too. So these are all nuances that are really kind of intriguing, I find. I also like this idea, my math, my math problem of this mindset of serendipity. You know, I think sometimes we have to have trust and faith that if we do the right thing, the right thing's going to somehow present itself. And, you know, I, I've heard you talk about uh, these different laws and um, that law of attraction, too. Like, I think that that's a part of that serendipity that um, is a part of this, this positive mindset. You know, it's like you kind of fall into something and... Um, you're meant to fall into um, this detour that's meant for you. And you might say, well, God, I gotta take a detour. But a lot of times you have to have trust and faith that that detour is meant to take you in the right direction or a change of direction. And I also love this idea of wanderlust is too. I like the abstract mindset. I'm not so concrete. And sometimes I, I think I have dreamer's disease sometimes. But I think wanderlust is a part of that as well. It's been instilled by, by my mother, actually, who encouraged um, traveling and just experiencing. And we didn't have a whole lot of money growing up. And so I didn't know that. Mom would, would do a lot of uh, fun experiences with us and for us. And um, sports just seemed to latch on, you know, that I found purpose with that, you know. I grew up without a father as well. Um, actually, he was divorced um, when I was four years old. And I, I always heard he was a pretty good athlete. That's what I heard growing up. So I thought, man, what a better of a way to make a connection than to play sports. And then I could maybe have some things to talk to dad about that um, we don't maybe realize that um, are a part of us. And we put these experiences together. And, and so, um, so here we are, you know, I mean, this is here we are. And I, that's what I, I, I enjoy. So there's got to be a little bit of that serendipity and, and wanderlust within uh, these mindsets. So anyway, just thought I'd throw it out there. What is the equals? Does, does it equal something? Oh. Talking? I'm oh, waiting yes. for the, the answer to the problem. Really? Is, wow. Is there something on the last slide? Well, guess what? There's no last slide. And I okay. put that there because I figured, you know what? That's what you have to kind of figure out. That's what you kind of have to figure out. Putting all of these pieces together, it's like a jigsaw puzzle, you know? Sometimes we don't know what the picture looks like. Sometimes we don't even have a box to refer to in this thing called life. And uh, 
it's frustrating putting that piece and understanding it too. But I feel like um, that's a part of part of that self awareness that that we find out about ourselves too. You know, you can see like I feel like that if you can influence those around you, your group, and I don't know how many people you come into contact with a day, like a number, just give me a rough number, just generally speaking, average on Wednesdays. How many people do you usually come in contact with, Laurel? Well, I barely left the house. So just my neighbor walking his dog and the people that live in the house with me. Six. Okay. Six. Okay. So that's a nice group. So my thing is when we talk about, to me, I, I'm always trying as best as I can, you know, uh, to, do the, to do the right thing. And it's difficult sometimes, but I feel like we have that support system with those six people that we meet today. You know, and also like think about um, I really I, I feel like, um, you know, let's throw in this political scene like I, I really it's I'm not a political person. I, it's tough for me to get caught up in that because we all come from different backgrounds and the reasons why we favor this or that. That's that's a complete choice that I think works well in uh, in this thing called a democracy. So, you know, those are those are things that are that are are really important, I believe. Who are we to say what works for another? And, and I feel like there are these common themes of this, um, this idea of positivity and, and uh, this inspiration that we, you know, how we, how we strategize with our growth mindset and, um, you know, trusting the process, you know, talked about trust the process of hope and perseverance. And I think that there's something to that, you know, we're, we're in a, a society of, quick fixes and instant gratification. And I think sometimes we need to reflect a little bit. And that's a part, part of that self-check too, that sometimes I think we lose a little bit along the way. Mm -hmm. I don't know, just my two cents. Just your two cents. Did you come up with that um, tagline or motto to trust in the process of hope and perseverance? Where did that come from? Well, uh, it's over, over, um, just things you think about it when we had to open up the guidance office here at Gerstel. And um, so we had to write a mission, we had to write a vision and a motto. And when I sat down to write our, our motto, you know, just a little quick blurb, we have some principles and attributes and hope and perseverance is some of our attributes. So there's a process to that. I think that, you know, uh, from a guidance counseling standpoint, there's a process to figuring out how to get to a place that's hopeful with inspiration where you can feel um, like you're aspiring, you feel, you feel purposeful. Uh, I think that that's really, really important. I just feel like that's, that's that transitional thought of going from you know, where we are and, and um, you know, Think about different environments and the kids that grow up in different kinds of environments that may inhibit this idea of a growth mindset or maybe uh, a positive mindset with hope. You know, again, this that's the major theme, I think, with a lot of these self-help uh, things around us. So it can be difficult for for people um, to, you know, their habit might be to um, maybe they've been abused. Maybe they're the abuser. So again, different, different uh, kind of a mindset in a sense, but um, I feel like this positive hope has got to be a part of that. So I, I really like that as a, you know, we were going back and forth about what should be the title of the, of the talk tonight. And that was just at the bottom of your email. It's like trust in the process of hope and perseverance. And I thought that was perfect. Um, because you don't, so we, we've talked about positivity and for some people being positive comes easily and um, you know, it helps them get through hard times. And for other people being positive doesn't come naturally. And we're all kind of, um, there is a, a genetic baseline, but it doesn't mean we can't do things in life to bump up um, our happiness factor and hope is 
like something that there's always, almost always seeds of hope. And to nourish those seeds is is what you do as a guidance counselor, is what you do as a coach, um, is what I try to do as a health coach and an occupational therapist. And um, it's something that can be, that is acceptable, even for someone who is not feeling overjoyed and super positive. Mm -hmm. I had a, a yoga student come into class one day. She'd just gone to a new therapist and the therapist was much younger than her. And she was like, guess what? My therapist told me today, all I have to do is think positive. She's like, wow, now I don't have to pay you any more money you <laughs> because right. you figured it out for me. She was furious. She was like, don't, don't just tell me to be positive. Like sometimes there's things you have to work through. And um, I'm going to bring up Ted Lasso again, because when we talk about, you know, moving through tough situations. Um, it's, so I don't know if you know that the story at all, but he's a, like a division two football coach in the U S and he gets um, sent to be a soccer coach of a premier league in, in England for a woman who has just basically inherited the club as he's recently divorced her husband and she's trying to sabotage the club. So she hires him on purpose to make things fail, but he's like ultra positive and, you know, anyway, one of the things that he says to his players is, is be like a goldfish. And they're like, what? He's like, they have a 10 second memory, you know? So if you, you fail at something, you're, you're miserable at, you just, you know, tried to score a goal and you went off the crossbar and <clears throat> you don't dwell in it, but, you know, and talked about that transitional thought that you kept going back to. What's that transitional thought? What's that next thing? And that, that can be helpful in real life or on the soccer field or the lacrosse field or the basketball court. But yeah. when we mentioned this um, in a previous conversation, you'd like, Okay. And in some situations that's helpful, <laughs> be like a goldfish. And in some situations, you're going to be like my yoga student. who's really pissed off at her therapist. Like sometimes I need someone to listen. And that's also what you do is really listen. Thank you. Find those seeds of hope to help people persevere. Oh, isn't it so important though? I mean, we need time to process new information. So I can't finish a thought. I've been in situations where sometimes parents um, can, can be overbearing and almost talk to you in front of their child like they're in third person. Or if they're like uh, a two-year-old explaining things at a level that you know, like a 17 year old is like, geez, they, they're not a, a dog where you're talking in front, it's a person. So that was, that was another, uh, you know, cracks in the hull of a relationship between mother and son, you know, and, and she, she recognizes that she takes the, the steering wheel and she talks and she talks and, and her talking does not align with her son's view of the world and that frustrates him that frustrates him so you know we, we do some things to the best of our ability and how we how we do that and and sometimes um you know, if you don't have communication if you're not listening to it can be a difficult place to be um you know in this idea of um recovery i guess but again i, I just think that it's important to establish um, another way of thinking about something I think that's really important to always challenge yourself if you're stuck. Always, um, you know, I just think that once we start trying, stop trying to find that, that positive, that's when some other things start to kind of, kind of enter our lives that might not be, um, be so good. But it's always a challenge though, you know, it's, it's never easy. It's never, never, never easy. But uh, I wanted to also say, um, 
a way of, a, of expression too. There's one student who, not a writer, tech person, you know, sees the view and the lens of a technology, tried something new in writing and um, the writing was phenomenal. It's a great way to express. And not only are you expressing, you're, you're sharing that with others. And I think sometimes when you have a point of view that is not coming across to others, we get frustrated, we get really frustrated with that. And I think that sometimes we, that's where we see some of these cracks in the hall with, with the relationships that we have, because um, you know, listening is, is, you know, it's important. <laughs> Can we go back a little bit to talk about um, transitioning or the, the potential to transition from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset and the power of feedback? Mm. So um, this is something that I learned from one of my favorite professors in grad school, Dr. Sally Schultz. And she was um, a child therapist before she was an occupational therapist. So she had that lens as well. and she would regularly share with us, you know, don't compliment somebody's innate smarts or their innate athleticism or give them feedback on specific things that they did. And I'm so glad that she taught me that before I was a mother because it really impacted the way I talked to my kids as they were, you know, learning how to walk or they fell down or, you know, and everything beyond that, um, engaging in risk-taking out in the world and, and to, to, to praise, you know, and I put that in quotes because you don't wanna, it shouldn't be false praise. It should be feedback that is specific to, to talk about how hard they worked, what they did. And that's the difference between a growth, a fixed mindset and a growth mindset that right. we all have the ability to get better, to get smarter, to get healthier, to become a better athlete, a better student. Um, we all have that. We that do. Process. You do. But if, 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 if we're in this place where um, it's tough, it's tough to, to get any movement sometimes when we're so down in uh, this idea of despair. It's difficult to kind of kind of move move out of that. So um, it, it's interesting. I there's there's four things this the student we were working on when we focus on that feedback. There's four things. There's progress. Mm -hmm. That's an that that that's a growth mindset. This idea of progress, where you are, where your own expectations are. <laughs> in relation to others, things like that. So we have this progress. Maybe you have a goal, love the goals. And where are we along this, uh, you know, your smart goals, you've heard that before, but I think progress is a big part of that. You know, where are we? Um, also I have up there strategy. I think some way we have to kind of strategize a little bit about how we kind of move around the halls. Part of your strategy is, do I stay away from and incur more kinds of mental anguish or do I avoid that, you know, and how do I avoid that? Well, again, if you're a cross country runner, maybe you go on long runs and, and try to figure out what that equals is, you know, that we're all trying to figure out what does that mean? What, what is the equals there? So, and also persistence, uh, I think perseverance and persistence, you know, you've heard probably stories about grit, you know, it's not about your academics, it's about the grit. And that's where pers uh, persistence is, is lies with grit, you know, getting knocked down and getting back up. How many times do you get knocked down in your day, whether it's through people that might disagree with you, or maybe, you know, if you're trying to avoid, you know, and all of a sudden, oh, it's hard because it's just difficult, you know, I mean, we, we beat ourselves up and, uh, but we got to continue to just get back up and, and, uh, and keep moving. So that's why I like, you know, we all have our own philosophy, our own mindset. Um, of a healthy mindset, and it's, we get we get pieces from from um, people that set the example, or maybe in how you maybe instruct others too. We just have this idea or this way, but um, yeah, 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 good conversation about uh, mental health. I mean, it's it's real, and I, I think it's it's more real than um, it's got to be open and out there because I feel like once we stop expressing 
how we feel, whether it's in a positive or, or, or negative set, you know, tamping down that, that, uh, that frustration and that anger, it really definitely is uh, depression turned inward. And so, you know, we, we deal with a lot in our days. And so we got to have our go-tos, Laura. You have any go-tos like um, when things are really stressed out in your life and what are some things, um, let me guess, yoga, right? That's one thing. That's one. Well, what's, that, what's another one for you? Um, different, your go-to? My, my dog. So Rocco right here. Um, and your, your story really got to me because our previous dog saved my daughter. Um, yeah. Wow. That was Isis, our German shepherd. Oh, um, I really think that the, uh, we sense things, we, including our, our pets too, there's this extra sense of, of uh, doing the right thing, I think. Mm -hmm. That's hopefully that is, but. My other go-tos are, for me, I have to, I have to schedule in some things so that um, even if I'm not having a good day, I, I have to go do this because it's scheduled and it's on my calendar and other people are counting on me. So, um, you know, sometimes I can go into teach a yoga class in a bad mood, but I have to be there for my students. Mm -hmm. And I leave 60 minutes later feeling like a new person. Yeah. You know what I think that one of the best things to break out of in, uh, a mood that you want to break out of any kind of a mood that you just don't want to be there i know we got to feel what it is that that we're going through and i get that and we want to make sure that um you know we, we kind of move forward but um i think that the best way to get out of that serving others i think it's that all, is always brings you out whether um whether it's in yoga class like you say you kind of put your own needs off to the side and and serving others um it really really um changes your outlook and your attitude i think 100 percent I do. So, you know, again, we, we really want to put into action when we're in a certain area, we want to move. We want, we want to, you know, I think that um, we just got to move and, 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 and get moving. Our, I think our bodies are geared towards this idea of pleasure. And sometimes when we're in this negative zone feeling, we, we got to kind of move a little bit and take action. And I think that that's part of breaking away from, from that. Yeah. And my other go-to, particularly during this, you know, last two years, ugh, it was, you know, tough because I, I, I went, I quit work because I was terrified to be in an environment where people were dying left and right. And with my MS, I was at that point, didn't know if I was a high risk. Um, so I kind of hibernated, you know, went to my house and, and I'm not a, I'm an extrovert. Like I get energy from being with other people. And suddenly I wasn't with anybody and I could feel myself doing that downward spiral. Mm -hmm. um, and I had a couple of friends who would just said, Let, let's just get on the phone and talk to each other and walk. So we're not safe to walk side by side, apparently. So let's talk on the phones. I put in some headphones and then I started doing that with like friends who weren't local. So I reconnected with a friend in New Jersey and we like walked every Tuesday at 1030 for like a year, still try to do it as often as we can. And that like got me out of, out of the bed. So it was like, you know, therapy, talking to a friend and exercise of mm -hmm. and movement. So yeah, all my go-tos. Yeah. Yeah. I think that sometimes we don't pay attention to uh, our needs a lot of times because we're focused on others. Um, I'm sure being a mother and, and, and things like that and, and a, a parent, it's difficult. I mean, because you're in a lot of different directions. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I can now take naps, by the way. I have a 16-year-old daughter and <laughs> an 18-year-old son who's in college, so I can take naps now. So that's, that's a nice go-to for me, too, yeah. It's yeah. such fun to see the kids grow and, and to, to celebrate each transition. I think my, my first favorite transition is when they can get themselves in and out of a car seat. Like, that's fantastic. You remember and, carrying that thing? Oh, right, that the thing worst. is. <laughs> Jeez, man, you like this. <laughs>
Yeah. Uh, now, it's, now it's, when I was not planning on making dinner tonight, and my 19 year old's like, "Mom, what are you making for dinner?" I was like, "You can make dinner. You're old enough to do that." So, I'm passing on. There you go. <laughs> passing on to you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it it has been a a pleasure connecting with you tonight and chatting. So. Yeah. You too. Um, what what is I can guess what your why is, but from your words, what, what is your why? Why do you do what you do from guidance counseling to coaching? Um, what gets you out of bed? That's always a tough question mm-hmm. that you ask. Mm-hmm. It's definitely comprehensive, you know. Um, you know, I, I think growing up, like, I didn't want to put all my eggs in one basket. I always felt like I wanted to kind of do a lot of different kinds of things. And um, I like that idea of uh, eclecticism. I like that. That kind of keeps me going. Um, So I don't know. What do you want to be when you grow up? I don't know. Like, gosh, middle school and high school, all this pressure. And but a lot of the jobs that I had involved um, counseling camp counselor um and it seemed that seemed to be i i didn't know what to do when i went to college i'm like you gotta check a box now so i checked the box of um psychology i like i like the idea of of um studying human behavior sports behavior i like that idea so let's go with that why not so i feel like along the way we have different experiences uh I graduate, graduated college and I went to London, England for a year to teach lacrosse. In London, England, they paid for everything. The experience, I loved it. I, I mean, it was it rained all the time, but it doesn't matter. We still like, got outside. But I feel like that, again, was you, you have this, um, this uh, idea of serving uh, around active sports. This happened to be lacrosse. So you know, when I got done there, uh, you know, you start looking around at what you want to do with your life when you come back at 24. So graduate school was, uh, I worked a little bit in, um, for an ice hockey company. And then um, I was a graduate assistant. Um, I felt like as a graduate assistant, let's go for school counseling. So that's what, that's what my, um, my major was. And it just, it kind of just continued to grow as a part of who I am. And and, and what it is that, that I do. And um, I think that part of the why is listening to like yourself a little bit of um, where you wanna be and how you wanna set yourself up and, and how you present yourself. And, and most importantly, how you affect or support or serve others. I think that that's, I'm, I'm learning that um, as the older that I get, that's, um, that's a path that, um, a part as a part of who we are you know and so when we talk about the why like um i feel inspired i feel inspired it doesn't it, it's um doesn't cost anything you know it's kind of like your effort and attitude it's it doesn't it doesn't cost a darn thing but how you present that and how you kind of go about that and and help others and serve others along the way that's part of the why you know and and i never really thought about it you know, what, what is your why? But um, like, it seems like we always need to add on to as we, as we get older. And I like the idea of hope. What do we talk about? Serendipity, wanderlust, and this growth mindset. So maybe that's what the, the jag I'm on right now. But, um, you know, we package that up and we, and we put our foot in front and we keep walking, right? Right. So... Yeah, thank you. This was fun. I enjoyed yeah, it. Thank you so much. So if, if um, anybody out there wants to wants you to be their um, mindset coach to improve their golf swing or um, what else do you mindset coach for? Oh, a lot of different things. Eclectic. Of- Eclectic. So it's, it's not just sports. All over the place. Yes. You, you helped me in my lacrosse game just by just by being there. Really? Yep. Mm. <laughs> I didn't say anything that embarrassed you, did I? No. Okay. It's all good. But you surprised <laughs> me at the final four, like up at the top of the stands, like, yeah. Yeah. Like, oh my God. Oh, that's right. Believe yeah. it. Gosh. 
Yeah, you know, it's it's interesting now, like um, watching watching our kids or or your kids or or my my kids play um, whatever it is, sports or whatever. If they play an instrument or or anything that they enjoy doing, like you really want to shout from the roof, rooftops. And sometimes, a lot of times, I like to film Max when he when he wrestles and and um, man, there's some times where I'm like, would you shut up? You know, you only yelled in warm up, and I wasn't even on the field for the game anyway, so <laughs> it was all good. Oh yeah, okay. Like you said, you had like a sign. You're like, way to go, two four. I heard. I knew it was your voice immediately. How you remember all these things? Nice. But, okay, I'm glad I didn't embarrass myself. That's all. 91, 92. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Down, down Route 81. Max goes to VMI. Roanoke's not too far from. Yeah, no, but we were at Lehigh for the Final Four. So you you went to Lehigh. She's a whiz. Yeah, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. You're pulling things out that, uh, geez, I don't know where you get your information. But it's, <laughs> <sounds like. laughs> so if anybody wants to find you, Mr. Dan Gorley, wh where do they go? Um, well, my email is dgorley at gerstel.org. Okay. 717-398-8715. Oh, you know what I also do, which is really fun? Again, being eclectic, I don't mean to like throw out like a plug there, but we do this thing at uh, Gerstel called Camp Eclectic. It's for um, middle school kids. And we do, when we say eclectic, we don't just do all sports stuff. Because, you know, some people, when they, when they want to do a camp, they just don't want to do just sports. We do like wacky kind of sports and uh, we do some uh, arts and crafts that are kind of, kind of wacky. And, you know, we do a, all kinds of fun things, whether we have these motorboat races that nobody who knows how to drive a motorboat. I don't, neither does anybody else, but we, our stomach is in stitches. That's just one event. We also have this thing called Guppy Gulch. If you're ever familiar with Guppy Gulch, a lot of people in Maryland might not be familiar. I, I live in Pennsylvania, uh, Gettysburg, and we don't even know this area called Guppy Gulch. You gotta search it. Oh, oh I think when my daughter did the an exchange with England for lacrosse, when yes. they came here, they went to Guppy Gulch. Oh, she it, it, she it was insane. Yeah, of, uh, doing all wacky. Things. So this is kind of a perfect um, wrap up because we didn't even talk about this, and and this is one of the things that's really good for mindset is just play, Experience. like have yeah. fun. Yeah. yeah get out there getting out there yep absolutely all right i'll shut up i'm sorry no don't be sorry that this was this was perfect it was a good way to to wrap it up and um that just took me back to the to the beginning from my gratitude for the things that you brought into my life and and like just being outlandishly outlandishly hilarious and fun that that was you oh my gosh well yeah. We, we, we won't tell all the stories but <laughs> okay great let's end it <laughs> okay <laughs> thanks a lot i really enjoyed it and Thank you uh, so much yeah we'll be in touch this was wonderful all right